But if everything is very easy, then you're going to share more easier. What do you think? Ah, what? What about Dunya? Almost there. Almost there. You got the answer? No? It is not me trying to make things up or extrapolating something and pulling it out. This is what Shaykh Haniyat said over and over again. It's what the Holy Prophet has said over and over again. Which is what? <laughs> Saying, I fear for the people in the Ahir Zaman. Because they are going to what? They're going to fear death and they're going to love this world. Hubub dunya. Hubub dunya. Hating the death, meaning hating to pass from this world. Hating the end of your life, hating the ahirat. Prophet is saying, if you hate to see Allah, Allah hates to see you. You're hating death, that is the doorway to seeing Allah. Hating that death. If you hate that death, that means you love the life. And you're going to do everything you can to make yourself to feel alive. That is the most important thing, right? If you don't feel alive, then you feel dead. I hate death, so I have to feel alive. So they try everything now to make themselves to feel alive. Halal things, <clears throat> it deadens that part of my ego. <laughs> it kills my ego. Halal things kill the ego. Haram things makes you feel alive. So now they enter into all the haram things to make themselves to feel something, but it's not life that they're feeling. They're feeling shaitan. They're feeling disobedience. They're feeling the fire of hell. Hubub dunya. You hate death, now you start to love this world. When you love this world, You will never get enough of it. When you love this world, nothing is enough. If you're given another world like this, you say, I want more. You're given 1,000 worlds like this, you say, I want more. Because when you love the world, what happens now? Hmm? What? It, it runs away from you, meaning you're not going to get satisfied. Okay, you're not going to guess. Which is why in other hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the satisfaction, the pleasure of food from the rich people and put it into the mouth of the poor people. You see the rich people, they eat, they eat the best thing and they eat them. There's no shukur, there's no taste anymore. They don't taste anything. But the poor people, when they eat just a simple bread, simple food, they show so much gratitude, so much taste to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thankfulness to Him. But no. You fall in love with the world. The world, you can never be satisfied with this world. There is no satisfaction anymore. You cannot have satisfaction, not only because it is this world. Even if you get something that is out of this world, even if you get the knowledges of the uh, angels, is not going to satisfy you. Because the heart can only be satisfied with Allah. So now you have this love of this world. You say one, I must have two. Two, I must have four. But the Prophet ﷺ is saying, the believer, what he has, it is enough for two. Correct? If he has for two, it is enough for four. 
Meaning the believer now shares, the believer now shares the pain and the believer now shares the pleasure. Someone else is in pain, the believer feels it. He's not going to be selfish. And what the believer has, he's going to share. And the believer is knowing that whatever that he's having, Allah gives more. He is not depending on himself or other people, they're depending on Allah. That is the faith of the people before us. They were depending on Allah. Let me tell you something, okay? Simple understanding. Before we met Shah Fandi, before we meet our brothers, we have a sense of what generosity is, we have a sense of what dunya is, we have our own money, we have this and that. But it changed. And you became very um, happy to share things. Before that, your generosity is according to what your father taught you or what your friends are. It is not according to now generosity, according to the Shah, according to the Prophet, according to Islam. What the right hand gives, the left hand must not know. Especially people, they raised everything, you must count everything. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? What are you getting out of it? It's very dunya oriented. The generosity is dunya oriented. But it cannot be. Generosity is not from dunya. Generosity is from Ya Kirim, the most generous one. It's from divine uh, presence. So now, if you are going to be generous and you're going to be counting, hmm, there's not generosity from the presence of Ya Kerim. There is generosity according to how you understand what has been taught to you, but not what the Prophet has brought and not what Allah is showing. Their generosity, their generosity is everything. Right? Their generosity, they're asking Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. They're asking, in fact, it's not him, they're asking Imam Lazam. Because they were testing him according to Zakat. They say, it's like this, it's like this. He says, what about you? He says, mine is different. He says, aha, you see, you're a sectarian, you're different. He says, because I follow the mazhab of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, you cannot carry. What is for awam is one fortieth, that is the zakat. But if you are following the mazhab of Abu Bakr Siddiq, it is everything. So where are we going to learn our generosity from? Wrong people. But we still think it is. Now you find someone. <laughs> for me, I found a share and said, oh, and look at the brothers and said, oh, especially the way that the Ottomans are using, especially the way that, let me say, Turkish people they are. They are a bit crazy in that good way also. No other nationality on earth I hear people fighting with each other to pay the bill. No other nationality I hear. That this one say I want to pay the bill but my friend paid the bill I got so upset I killed him. No other nationality. This is real. This is coming from Islam. You understand? This is honor. Ah, this is honor. It's okay. It's doing something okay also. So we didn't know. You didn't know, I didn't know. Now you're here. You have an idea of generosity. But now you're here with a few people around. Now you're starting to understand what it means to give from yourself to other people. Right? to make yourself available for other people. That you start worrying about other people. You're a doctor, you start worrying about other people's health. But that didn't come naturally to you too. I have to say, I have to say, and I think have has to be formed, it's okay. What are you? You're a butcher, you start worrying if people have meat or not. 
other people. What is your capacity? Your capacity is that. Then you start, you're doing what? You start sharing. But you need this. Jamaat. That is not concentrating on dunya. If this Jamaat is concentrating on dunya, you won't share. It's impossible. There is a share and we're following him. There is a discipline, we're following. Now you start doing things. Now you start not counting and not caring so much. You start giving and you say, this is how it should be. And you start to think, what was my wealth all about before? What was my wealth doesn't mean money. Wealth is your time. Wealth is your uh, patience. Wealth is your generosity to just sit down with a person that you haven't met maybe for one month and you're concerned. What's happening? Let me know. Let's speak. Because it's not just sitting in sohbet and listening like a, a parrot or a tape recorder. It's taking that and putting it in your life. How much of the sohbet Shah Effendi has given? How much have we spoken about having a community, having a jamaat? Now, can anyone say, no, no, no. Shah Effendi's concentration was not on Jamaat. I'm just taking it and I'm running with it. Can anyone say that? If it is, say to me. It's at this place. This is, this is not for me. It's for you and your children and your grandchildren. So now we start living not for ourselves. Not for ourselves. We start living now for others. At least to feel a little bit. This is only a little bit. This is just only a taste of what it means to have neighbors, what it means to have jamaat. And Shri Afendi would train us and wash us up, knock us wall to wall for years about this. He said, you people have no heart. Dead, heartless people, selfish people. Hmm? How many times, especially uh, years ago before most of you came, he says, and he would test people. He says, this one is in the hospital. How many of you know? So we didn't know. It's selfish, heartless people. This one is sick. What do you know? This one is in need. Do you know? Are you forming? No. You're only having social activities around yourself and backbiting and slandering. It was very hard for years. Yes or no? If it's not, let me know. Maybe you're saying, I cannot reach out to everyone. That's okay. But let me reach out to one person. Let me reach out to this one, to this one. I cannot do anything. <sighs> Let me reach out to them by serving them some tea. I cannot do anything. Let me reach out once in a while to go to the barn or somewhere and to do something. Because Darga, the prayers, everyone is praying for us, going everywhere for something. I'm coming <laughs> once a month. Let me try to do something. That's why you see our brothers sometimes in there cleaning the dishes, doing things. They don't have to. I'm not making it a law that they have to do it. Have I done that job myself? Of course I did, years. It's okay. But now we're talking. Now it is a matter of honor. So the selfishness. We lost community. We lost being Ahl. Ahl? It's community, you know? Be part of one another. We lost that. Every man for himself, from top to down. Start from the top. Once you got rid of the Khalifa, once you get rid of the Ummat, you're only concentrating on nationalism and chasing after the dunya. Chasing after the dunya. No Muslim country I'm seeing, they're chasing after Ahirat. They put crazy people to talk about Ahirat so that people get turned turn off from them. Then, once you start giving a little bit, you're starting to taste the sweetness of generosity and what it means to help someone who is in trouble. 
How many more ayats and hadith we have to say? How Prophet ﷺ said to relieve your brother of hardship and trouble. Hmm? It is worth everything that you've done or you think that you're going to do. Meaning the reward there is tremendous just to help your brother. So, we look to see how we are being selfish. Are we taking? Are we giving? What are we giving? We're demanding. We only know how to complain. I'm not getting this. I'm not getting this. No one is helping me. No one is this. Like some people, they're saying, I can't get along with everyone. Everyone is doing this and this. I said, mm, you wish there was someone you can be close to. He says, yes. You wish there's someone who is going to be good, right? Who doesn't do all this. Yes. I said, be that person. Don't wait for that person. Be that person. Oh, I cannot be. Oh, I know you cannot be. You're being selfish, though. 